Optical Music Recognition, known as OMR, is a research field focused on how to computationally read music notation in documents. Recent advances in machine learning, namely deep learning, have led the research community to discover workflow pipelines that can recognize and encode full music tapes with high accuracy. It can be noted that this process is close to text recognition. Still, could we exploit music particularities to improve these recognition results? Hello everyone from the International Conference on Frontiers in Handwriting Recognition. My name is Antonio Rios Vila and in this video, I'll discuss this topic from our submitted paper, exploring the two-dimensional nature of music notation for score recognition with end-to-end -end approaches. Before diving in the main topic of this paper, we should do a brief review of OMR recognition processes. As I have stated before, recent advances in deep learning have brought new recognition workflows that significantly improved the results of the traditional ones. On the one hand, there is the segmentation-based approach, which is still under investigation. This approach replaces complex multi-stage pipelines for symbol isolation with region-based convolutional neural networks that directly locate symbols in the image. On the other hand, there are the end-to-end -end or holistic technologies, which directly encode a pre-segmented image into a musical language sequence. Specifically, we find approaches based on convolutional recurrent neural networks that come in varying configurations. Those inspired by natural language processing, such as the so-called seek-to-seek architecture, and also those trained using the connectionist temporal classification loss function, which currently represents the state of the art in this recognition approach. The results of these recognition processes are usually encoded in an agnostic encoding. This codification interprets the music symbols by their physical features, concretely its shape and its position in the staff, which are combined in a single token. However, musical symbols have a two-dimensional nature, as the meaning is extracted from those features. For instance, while the glyph of a note typically indicates its duration, its vertical position within the staff indicates its pitch, along with other elements such as the clef and the key. The currently used agnostic notation does not take into account this nature, as this combination into a word represents a unique category. We believe that there could be notation approaches which could benefit from this nature and thus improve the results of the recognition process. In this paper, we explored if this idea was well trodden. To carry out this project, first, we decided which codifications had to be used during this experimentation. The main idea was, with the given syntax structure of the agnostic encoding, which we will be referring as the standard encoding, split the shape and the position of the node. We defined two variations according to this starting point. But, before talking about these variations, we must note that we use the standard encoding as our baseline for the experimentation, as it is the codification used in the state-of-the-art models. This codification combines a set of glyph words with another of position words. Note that the number of classes can be very high, because it is the product of the cardinalities of both sets, which can result in hundreds of classes. Our first variation comes from previous work which shows that predicting glyph and position separately is beneficial for isolated symbol classification. The glyph and the position of the nodes are predicted independently. Thus, the model would have two outputs, one focused on predicting node shapes and the other on predicting positions. These results are then joined into a pair of outputs, creating a sequence like the standard encoding. This codification is called the parallel encoding. With this encoding, we can see that the size of the predicted vocabulary is lowered, as the amount of words is divided into two groups. Our second variation lays between the standard and the parallel encodings. While only a single predictor is used, the recognition is split into two pieces of information that must be retrieved sequentially. That is, the prediction of each symbol is represented by two consecutive categories. First, the glyph, and then the position in the staff. This variation is referred as the split sequence encoding. This approach also reduces significantly the amount of vocabulary to be predicted, as we isolate the categories into a single group, being its size, the sum of the single shape words and the single position ones. In turn, the length of the predicted sequences is multiplied by two. Once presented the studied codifications, we must discuss the models used for this experimentation. Our goal is to explore these output encodings with the state-of-the-art models used to perform OMR recognition processes to evaluate its possible enhancements. In this particular case, we used a convolutional recurrent neural network trained with a CTC loss function. The convolutional block will learn the relevant features of the image, and the recurrent block will model them as a sequence of musical symbols. 
CTC helps the network to learn how to predict the targeted sequence tokens through the image's frames. As far as we know, CTC training cannot provide more than one output at the same time, so it is impossible to obtain the output pair needed for the parallel codification. This is because of its decoding process, known as greedy decoding, which takes the outputs of the network and finds the most probable path to build the output sequence. As this process is final, it needs to compute the probabilities from all the characters which belong to the vocabulary in order to reconstruct the path. Splitting the vocabulary into different sets would make this loss calculation to malfunction. Given the circumstances, we built a sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture with attention mechanisms on their outputs. Specifically, we implemented the global attention mechanism used in machine translation scenarios. In it, the network predictions are based on the decoder output and an attention metric which indicates the relevant input words to predict the next sequence block. As the parallel encoding has two outputs, we used a double attention mechanism. For the sake of completion, we tested this model on the standard and the split sequence codifications too. Once prepared all of our working environment, we experimented the encodings and the models on two music corpora. A printed one to check that the implementations were correct and a handwritten one to draw some conclusions. After the experimentation, we found some interesting results. As we can see in the display table, the proposed models and the studied codifications worked very well on the printed corpus. However, the interesting results lay on the handwritten one. It can be noted that the convolutional recurrent neural network with the sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture has remarkable difficulties in recognizing handwritten music scores. The explanation to this limitation rests on the fact that the sequence-to-sequence -sequence architecture gives the results once all the image frames have been processed, in contrast to the CTC-trained convolutional recurrent neural network, which might predict its symbol in its corresponding frame. This problem may also be related to the lack of enough handwritten data to train this model with acceptable performance. Despite that, we found interesting results on the convolutional recurrent neural network trained with CTC performance when comparing the standard and the split-sequence encodings. Surprisingly, the latter provides the best results in all cases. In the case of the printed dataset, this improvement is negligible. However, in the case of the handwritten dataset, there is a decrease of nearly the 40% of error with respect to the baseline. Given the results, we can assert that our premise was right. This work proves that it is worth exploring and researching new ways of encoding music for the purpose of optical recognition from document images, as one of the proposed alternatives in this paper outperforms the state of the art. However, this is not the end. Some questions open up from this research. For example, which is the uncertainty generated from predicting the position in the staff and the glyph simultaneously? Could exist a model that could profit this type of codifications? Can these encodings be pushed further? These questions are relegated to further research. And that's all. Thank you everyone for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and feel free to ask any doubts about the discussed topic. See you next time.